This week on Another Thing, more and more drones are taking flight with no rules or restrictions. We'll talk with a legislator who wants to change all of that. And my commentary this week is on the tragedy that turned into a miracle in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm Larry Menti. Welcome to Another Thing. Recently, a drone flew over Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia during a Phillies game. A drone landed on the White House lawn. Drones have impeded flights in and out of New York area airports, and things are only going to get worse as more people and companies buy drones. There is a cry for some guidance, some regulations from the government. But so far, there have been few. Ellen Kaloje kicks off our coverage of the drone wars. Ellen. Back in January, a man flew a drone into the side of the White House. Now, he said it was an accident, so he wasn't charged with a crime. Then just a few weeks ago, another man flew a drone right next to Citizens Bank Park. It wasn't actually over the Philly Stadium, so he wasn't charged with a crime either. But these cases highlight all the uncertainty surrounding drones, and some people say it's just a matter of time before someone gets hurt. The biggest concern I have is uh, accidents that are due to negligence. So someone going out and buying a kit, not having any experience or trying or not trying to learn from anybody and just going and flying it over a crowd of people because they can get really cool footage, but they don't realize the risk that they're putting people in. Max Tubman and Dan Sheets started Steam Machine Aerial almost five years ago. They've taken some amazing pictures over the years, but they turn down work all the time because some clients want risky shots down Broad Street or over City Hall. The problem is there's no enforcement of the existing laws, so anyone else can go and say, well, I'll do that job, no problem. So like, we have to turn down work for safety concerns, but our competitors, or some of our competitors, there's no one holding them to that same uh, regiment, so. The Federal Aviation Administration is working on new regulations surrounding drones, but a spokesman says there's not a timetable for the new rules because the agency wants to get it right. The goal is to maintain safety without putting undue burdens on this new industry. And theoretically, they're a couple of years behind where they said they would be originally. We're five years deep. When we started flying cameras, we were looking forward to seeing regulations that we could abide by within two years. And now here we are four or five years later. There are some real concerns, but the benefits of drones for, you know, entertainment for film and uh, surveying and public safety, I think the benefits far, far outweigh the uh, hazard. So I think, you know, everyone has to kind of like take that into consideration too, but it's really just a matter of educating the public. Now, some towns aren't waiting for the feds to hand down the regulations. They're taking matters into their own hands. In New Jersey, for example, Long Beach Township has banned the use of all drones over the water to prevent snooping on swimmers and sunbathers. And that could just be the start of a wave of local restrictions on drones around the country. Reporting for another thing, I'm Ellen Kaloje. Thank you, Ellen. We continue our conversation now with Assemblywoman Annette Quijano, who is a Democrat from Union County. She is also the chair of the Homeland Security Committee and is one, I will have to say, one of the few office holders who has taken on drones as an issue. It seems to me that we are going to have our skies filled with drones, unregulated drones, unless we start getting a handle on this and regulating it. Talk about the bill that, at least you have a couple of bills, talk about the one that is causing the most controversy right now. Well, I didn't realize it was causing You're so much controversy. You're the one that told me about it. I know, I did have a full, I can tell you, I had a full committee room last Thursday when we had our, our hearing. First of all, I don't want our skies to look like the New Jersey Parkway on a Friday night full of drones. Um, drones, for some, is a toy and for others, a concern. Mm -hmm. And so we have to find the balance. The bill that I introduced that has caused so, most, a lot of interest right now. Um, <laughs> interest, did I use the do, wrong word? Well, interest has to do with um, criminalizing individuals that use the unmanned aerial vehicles, also known as drones, um, to fly over critical infrastructure within the state of New Jersey and to photograph it. And um, I had in my committee hearing um, a group of hobbyists, um, and I had also, the, it, it ran the full um, gamut. Then I also had individuals from the Chemistry Council. 
who one of their members didn't realize a drone was in their secure perimeter until it crashed into their building. And so the question is, and I pose this to an individual that came to testify, you have a drone in the sky. How will you or I know if it's a good guy or a bad guy? Well, you don't. I mean, and so how, what's the answer to that? Uh, do you need to get a license? Do you need to get trained? What, what would you want? Well, in this particular bill, because there's a, a few bills, in this particular bill, it would require you to register with the Transportation Department in the state of New Jersey and also to secure insurance for your drone. People forget that the drones are in the air, but they can fall out of the air and they can injure an individual or they can, individ uh, they can damage property. Right. If, if, if they go up, they can come down. And you have to then also worry about how good the drone is and how good the operator is. So the, and right now there's no standards. I mean, the, a toy drone that costs $29 can also go up in the air with no regulations, and they're the ones that seem to, to drop the most. So your regulation is for the operators. Should there also be a, st a minimum standard for what is flown? Well, there's going to have to be, and, I, on, and after our committee hearing, I know that I'm going to, I uh, invited stakeholders to come and sit with me and have a discussion. We're going to have to look at different weight categories. Because a small drone, um, up to 55 pounds, the FAA does have some regulations. Um, it has to be um, within the sight of the operator. They have to take a test. Um, but we have to make sure that they also understand what are the perimeters on how to operate that particular um, UAV or drone. Um, it's scary because the we don't have police officers in the sky. You know, if someone is, um, they also have a regulation, um, and they're actually studying the commercialization of drones. That's another category. Um, to me, uh, Homeland Security is paramount. I live in what's called the most dangerous two and a half miles in the country. And so when I can introduce legislation that begins a dialogue and a serious discussion as to where do we, where's the balance? I was concerned um, about a, a father who used his particular drone to follow his daughter to school. I think it was her first day. But the flip side is that now he's provided that gentleman a blueprint for anyone that wants to follow children, anyone that may do harm to children on how do you secure their schedule. Well, now you can fly a drone around the school or en route to the school or en route to their home. And so we have to make sure that we protect our residents and that there is a balance with civil liberties. I do believe in civil liberties. But how do you enforce these? Uh, and I ask you that question because, I mean, you talked about the commercial use. Amazon has bought tens of thousands of drones. They want to make deliveries with them. Other companies have bought them too. The, the sale of drones is increasing exponentially. We're going to have drones all over the place. Police departments are going to be using drones. So you could possibly have a sky full of drones. Yes. How do you possibly police all of them? Well, wh while the um, drones have increased in their sales, there are also um, individuals who have created trackers of drones. And so with the tracker, and a gentleman did come to the committee um, hearing and showed us a tracker, very costly, I thought. Um, but by using, that tra using the tracker, you can um, get the registration number from the drone or the ID number. And so then you have the possibility, if there is a database already that includes the, that information, Thank you so much. I, I, I do you. appreciate it and I applaud you for what you're doing and please come back especially as you go as you make your way through <laughs> this maze of of new technology. Assembly, Assemblywoman Annette Quijano who is a Democrat in Union County and is one of the few politicians actually in the country working on regulating drones and and looking at a problem that's going to become bigger, especially over the next few years. When we come back, we are going to talk to a gentleman who uh, has some drones he wants to show us and how they operate, and I have a feeling he's going to disagree with you when another thing continues.